to Nurse Catherine here. Welcome back to today's video. As today's video, I will be teaching you how to assess lung sounds and how to decipher between the sounds. But before we get into that, first we need to even know the anatomy of your lungs. So let's go over that. Your right lung has three lobes and your left lung has two lobes. So you have your right upper lobe, your right middle lobe, and your right lower lobe. And then your left side, you have your left upper lobe and your left lower lobe. So now that we have the basic anatomy of where your lobes are located, let's go on to auscultation. To auscultate breath sounds, you do need a stethoscope. You need one with a diaphragm. You do not have to have the bell side, but it is recommended. When listening to lung sounds, you do want to compare side to side. So first I would start with my right upper lobe, then I would go to my left upper lobe. Then I would go to my right middle lobe, and then you can do the left after that, or you can go right to your right lower lobe and switch over to your left lower lobe. When I was in nursing school, it helped me so much to listen to my own lung sounds and to kind of hear and figure out what normal lung sounds sound like. So I'm going to tell you right now, put your stethoscope in and take a listen to your own lung sounds. Remember to hold your stethoscope with two fingers and start where you want to start, left or right and take a nice deep breath. The next question you may have is how many times do you need to listen on each side? Do you need to listen to 12 points, six points, eight points? There's so much education out there that tells you all these different things. But what I learned in nursing school was one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, one down here, one down here. So I learned eight points. Now the nurses that I have been precepting now, or the student nurses that I have been precepting, they have been learning a 12 points where you should be listening to. That is a more in depth um, assessment. So you could do that. It's not wrong. It's not wrong to over assess. You just want to make sure you're not under assessing. So I would always say, make sure you're at least listening to eight points. So look at this picture. I have dotted the points of where you will want to listen to on the front and look at the back as well. All those small white dots is where you will want to listen to your lung sounds. So we're through with listening to lung sounds. We're through with where you listen to them. Now let's go into abnormal lung sounds. So in this video, I'm going to cover the most abnormal lung sounds that I hear in my patients on a day-to-day -day basis. So the most abnormal lung sounds that I hear on a day-to-day -day basis would be ronchi, crackles, coarse crackles, wheezing, and diminished lung sounds. So let's start with ronchi. First of all, ronchi you hear continuously during inspiration and expiration. They are lower in pitch than your wheezing. And what would cause ronchi? So a cause of ronchi would be a lot of secretions in the lungs and the bronchial area. That's what will cause your ronchi sound. What does ronchi actually sound like though? It sounds like a snoring sound, kind of like a rumbling sound or a gurgling sound. And that's because air is trying to pass through the airway, but there's secretions in the way. So it's making that gurgling sound. Now let's quickly take a listen to what ronchi sounds like. You hear that gurgling, that rumbling. Next, let's talk about wheezing. So wheezing is caused by narrowing of your airways. Think about your airway and now it's getting really small. Try to think about air trying to push through that. It's not going to. So that's what causes the wheezing sound. An example of this would be your patient with asthma. Think about that when they're they get constricted in there, the bronchoconstriction or the bronchospasm that's happening and it closes off and now that air is trying to push through there. It's not working well, so it's causing that wheezing sound. Now let's take a listen to wheezing sounds. So next, let's talk about crackles. Crackles can be heard as like a wood burning um, or popping of that styrofoam stuff, the packing paper, that stuff. So that's what crackles can sort of sound like. Now, what causes crackles to happen? So crackles are more of a high pitched sound and they are caused by chronic problems like chronic 
bronchitis. It could even be caused by pneumonia. Pneumonia can have different sounds in different people, but crackles is one of those things that you may hear in your pneumonia patients. In listening to crackles, you will not hear this continuously as you're listening to the inspiration and expiration of the lungs. You actually will only hear it more so on the inspiration. Now let's take a listen to what crackles sounds like. Now let's talk about coarse crackles. So there are crackles and then there are coarse crackles as well. Coarse crackles are more of a low pitch sound and they last longer. Yes, they last longer than your typical crackles. The light crackles that can be heard in your pneumonia patient, this also could be heard in your pneumonia patient. This is just more of a wet sound. And remember, it is more low pitch than your crackling. And let's go into our last lung sound that I will be talking about, and that is diminished lung sounds. So think of your normal lung sounds. Listen to your lung sounds if you don't have any chronic conditions and hear how loud they are. That is what you want lungs to sound like. But when you have diminished lung sounds, they are not going to be that loud. And this too could also be heard in your pneumonia patient. Or if there is a collapse of a lung possibly, or a partial collapse, this could be more of a diminished sound as well. So that's why it is so important to listen to all the lobes of the lung on each side and compare side to side. So guys, if you have any questions, please comment below. Or if I mistakenly said something, also please comment below, let me know. Or if you have any other educational tips for those other nurses out there or those student nurses out there, please comment. But that is it for this video, guys. I am so happy you joined me today and I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe.